Hello students. This video is about using Google Sheets in order to notice patterns in data so we can come to some conclusions. So my first step in looking for patterns is I want to look at my data itself. I notice here I've got carbon dioxide concentration and temperature anomaly data over time. Because I have things over time, I know that my best type of graph to visualize these patterns is going to be a line graph because it shows how things change over time. I also have two different variables I'm looking at, carbon dioxide concentration and temperature anomaly. And what I'm trying to do is see if there's a relationship between these two variables. So I feel like a good way to do that would be to plot these two variables on the same graph and then look for any patterns between them. Does one correlate with the change in the other? The way that I'm going to do this is create a line graph with both of these on that single graph. When I look more closely at my data though, I notice my carbon dioxide concentration, these numbers are much, much larger than my temperature anomaly data. So if I graph these with the same scale, some of the patterns in the temperature anomaly are gonna be difficult to see. Therefore, I'm gonna graph these on the same graph, but with two different scales. This is possible to do in Google Sheets, but it can be a little bit tricky, so I wanna walk you through the process. The first thing that I'm going to do is highlight all of my Y value data. So I'm gonna highlight all of those. Then I'm gonna go up here to insert, and I'm gonna to go to chart. So this is showing me the automatic chart that Google Sheets chose for me. It is not the line graph that I want, so I need to change things around just a little bit so I can visualize my data in a more accurate way. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come over to my chart editor and under chart type, I'm not gonna choose a scatter chart. Instead, I'm gonna go down here to a combo chart. The other thing that I notice is I didn't actually highlight my x-axis data yet. So I'm gonna come over here where it says add x-axis, click on that, and it's going to allow me to highlight my x-axis data as well. Okay, so I've got my x-axis looking good. Up here though, I've got some bars versus a line, and I want them both as lines because they're both showing how things change over time. In order to do that, I need to go over to my customized section of my chart editor. If I go to series, it's going to allow me to apply something to all series or to a single series at a time. So I notice here my carbon dioxide concentration is in blue. So I'm going to click on that one and under type, instead of allowing it to be columns, I'm going to go to a line. Now I can see how this change is happening over time. But again, my temperature anomaly, all these changes, they're too small and I can't compare what's going on here. So back under series, I'm now gonna look for temperature anomaly. And instead of putting the axis on the left, I'm gonna change the axis to the right. Then I can see it rescaled all of my data. Therefore, because it rescaled it, I can see that these two things are really related. When this one goes down, so does the other, etc. So I can see my patterns a little bit better. The final thing that I need to do in order to make this the best graph possible is I need to make sure that all my axes are labeled correctly and my title makes a lot of sense. So if I come up to my title to begin with, so what this graph is actually showing me is carbon dioxide concentration and temperature anomaly over time. So I want it to say both of those things. So let me double click on this and change that. Instead of it being temperature anomaly versus carbon dioxide concentration, let's make it temperature anomaly and carbon dioxide concentration over time. There's a descriptive title that actually shows what's going on in my data. The last step here is I've got all my axes labeled correctly, um, except for the fact that over on this side, this is not my temperature anomaly, this is my carbon dioxide concentration. And this side over here isn't labeled at all. So I know I need to fix those labels as well. So I'll start with this one over here. Instead of making that temperature anomaly, let's say that that is carbon dioxide concentration. And that is in PPM, which stands for parts per million. Spelling it correctly would be helpful. Carbon dioxide concentration in parts per million. All right, that is looking good. Now, if I go here, I've got some different options. I've got my right vertical axis. So I'm gonna click on that one so I can put in a title for that. And that is where my temperature anomaly in degrees Celsius is occurring. 
All right, so I click off that. Let's double check my graph. That's looking good, looking good. Okay, now I'm ready to come to some conclusions based on my data. Okay, so your turn. I want you to try to do that same thing, create a graph just like this one so that you can come to your own conclusions.